Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Essence and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. We have Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Toilette, Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Parfum. In today's video, we're gonna be comparing the two, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I get into my comparison of Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Toilette and I compare it with Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Parfum, I just wanna mention that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click that red button in the corner, and of course, while you're at it, make sure to enable notifications by clicking on that bell icon, so whenever I do release these videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. So here we have it, Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Toilette, Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Toilette, de Parfum, what are the most significant differences between the two? Well, first things first, if you're looking at the aesthetic properties of the two, you will notice that with K Eau de Toilette, we have the gold hardware, so we have the gold cap, and then with uh, Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Parfum, we have the silver cap, which I think looks a little bit cooler, and we also have a bit of a darker bottle on the Eau de Parfum version versus the Eau de Toilette version, which is a little bit more clear and transparent. But of course, when we are wearing these fragrances, we are simply wearing the liquid. We're not actually wearing the bottle as a necklace around our neck, right? So what are the most significant differences in terms of the smell? Let's start with what user votes are reflecting on online platforms and online fragrance forums like Fragrantica.com. If you go on Fragrantica.com, you will notice that there is far more love for the Eau de Parfum version, despite the fact that it just came out. If you take a look at the Eau de Toilette version online, you will see that the dislike meter or ratio is far greater than the like or even the love meter. And it's pretty much the complete opposite when it comes to Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Parfum. The loves for this one are far more abundant, which which I think is reflected appropriately because myself personally, I know when I did my review of the Eau de Toilette version and I will leave a card somewhere up here, I wasn't a fan of it. I was not crazy about the smell. The Eau de Parfum version, I love it. I was really taken aback by it. I was really pleasantly surprised. And there's a certain wow factor in Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Parfum that you're not necessarily going to find in the Eau de Toilette counterpart. So in terms of the smell, what do I get? When the Eau de Toilette opens up, it's really bright, it's citrusy. Yes, you have that citrus in here. And I think that citrus is in sync or it lines up with other mass appealing designer releases. So we're talking about the Dior Sauvages of the world, the Mr. Burberry's of the world, the Blue de Chanel's of the world. And I think that that's a positive thing. I think if you're in it for that bright citrusy pseudo aquatic thing going on in there that is likely to get you a ton of compliments i think your preference might be the eau de toilette version however with dolce and gabbana k eau de parfum they take it in a much darker direction much richer much more dense and there's also this spicy patchouli thing going on in the opening i know both of these fragrances contain this pimento pepper note but in the original in the eau de toilette version of dolce and gabbana k i get a lot of that juniper berry and i think it's because of the juniper berry that it comes across smelling rather sharp and astringent and it almost has this biting quality about it. And for me, I was comparing it to Perry Ellis 360 for him. And that is a fragrance that I am not a fan of and I actually pick up on some similarities between the two. Now, when we're taking a look at the Eau de Parfum version of Dolce & Gabbana K, it opens up with that Nagarmoda, that pimento pepper, that spicy quality, that patchouli, the, the, you know, that blend of spices in the opening that is so likable. And it almost has this boozy quality about it. So it's very enriching. And there was, for a split second, and I mentioned this in my review as well, for a split second, it kind of reminded me of Straight to Heaven by Killian Paris. And that is one of my favorite fragrances. It has this really beautiful rum opening and that's on account of a lot of the spices that are used in there and so that patchouli that warmth that depth that i got to the composition immediately it reminded me a little bit at least in the opening of straight to heaven by killian paris and that's the first thing that let me know that this one had a much different olfactory blueprint this one was going to go in a much different direction than dolce and gabbana k eau de toilette now in terms of the i guess attitudes that each one of them conveys in terms of the occasions in which you would wear each one what are the main differences? What are the most significant differences? 
If you're looking for something that's a little bit more casual, something that's a little bit more laid back, something that's a little more apropos for the summer months, I think you're really gonna find that in Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Toilette. If you're looking for something that is darker, denser, richer, maybe more of a special occasion kind of a fragrance, but also one that will bring you into the autumn and the winter months, you're gonna be better off with Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Parfum. I think the Eau de Parfum version will give you better longevity. It's gonna give you a richer smell. It's going to be more suitable for the colder months. And if you're living in a climate where it's hot all year round and you like the types of fragrances out there, you know, with the citrus notes and the blood orange and those bright ethereal sort of notes, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more effervescent, fine. I would say go with Dolce Gabbana K Eau de Toilette. However, if you're living in a, a colder climate and you're looking for something that you can wear from October up until April or something like that, I would suggest checking out Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Parfum. I really feel as though this fragrance will get you through the colder months, but the longevity, because it's improved, it will give you slightly better performance as well. Now, the projection on the Eau de Toilette is gonna be a little bit better, and that's on account of the fact that alcohol really helps a fragrance jump up and radiate off your skin. It really helps in the volatility of said fragrance. Here, you're gonna get a higher concentration of aromatic compounds so you're going to have less alcohol so that means that and because of the lack of citrus as well because citrus is um a top note so it has a smaller molecular structure it's going to be more volatile on account of all of these things that i just spoke about this one is not going to be as loud on your skin but it is going to last longer and so if you favor longevity versus projection you're going to like dolce gabbana k eau de parfum if you favor a projection over longevity you are going to enjoy Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Toilette. But ultimately, when it comes to my personal preference, I prefer this one. I prefer Dolce & Gabbana K Eau de Parfum. I love the way that it smells. I love the way that it's pieced together. I love all of the notes that are included therein. I love that touch of juniper berry, which makes it a true flanker to the Eau de Toilette version. But I like the patchouli. I like the pimento. I like the nagarmoda. I like that ambery warmth that you get in the base. I know cedarwood is a, a unifying note between the two as well, but it's not really a woodsy composition as much as it's an aromatic composition that almost has like the oriental sprinklings in it you know an oriental fragrance traditionally is uh, dependent on resins and vanilla and patchouli and you know some of these resins include benzoin and labdanum and you know of course you don't have a whole lot of that going on in here but you do have a little bit of that ambery warmth which kind of takes it into oriental territory and I gotta be honest with you guys I do think that this is one of the best releases of 2020 of course, when it comes to the best releases of 2020, I would put Beau de Jour by Tom Ford pretty high up on that list. I would also put Black Orchid Parfum pretty high up on that list. But if you're looking for a really solid fragrance that, you know, in the dry down, I do feel like it's gonna have the same compliment factor as the original K, definitely check it out. I think you will be pleasantly surprised by K Eau de Parfum by Dolce Gabbana. And yes, that is my favorite between the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum. So I want to leave you off with this. If you have experience with any of these two fragrances, I would love to hear your take. I would love to hear your thoughts. Please let me know. Leave a comment down below. And once again, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And of course, whenever I do release future fragrance related content, whether it be comparison videos or top tens or whatever, it will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. And of course that includes comparisons, like I said, but also interviews with perfumers and giveaways and unboxings. And you guys know the drill. Thanks again for watching. I love you both or I love you all. <laughs> I love you both. I love you all. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.